What's up everybody, welcome back. Today we're talking five things that you can start doing right now to start taking better pictures using just your phone. So let's get into it, go one through five. By the end of this, you'll be taking better pictures than you ever thought possible. Cool thing about the five tips that I'm gonna go over is it doesn't matter if you're using an iPhone or an Android or if you're using a DSLR. The five tips that I'm gonna give you are applicable across all aspects of photography. So let's jump into it starting with number one. Tip number one is use grid lines. If you don't know what I'm talking about, pay attention because we're gonna do this quick. Take your phone, I don't know how to do it on an Android. Uh, go to your settings, scroll down to where you see camera, go into your camera settings, and then just make sure that that little grid box is checked and what that's gonna do if you open up your camera app is it's gonna overlay those grid lines. By using the grid lines on your phone, it allows you to take advantage of a guideline in photography called the rule of thirds. Basically what the rule of thirds is, is a guideline that says by splitting your image into sections of three, you create a more balanced, aesthetically pleasing picture for the viewer because our eyes are naturally drawn into a section of three. So by using the crosshairs that are created by those lines that make up the grid, you can put your subject in one of those crosshairs, keep them or it or whatever it is in that section created by the rule of thirds, and it's gonna create a more balanced photo. You can also use the rule of thirds to make sure that your horizon is straight. So if you're taking a landscape and you've got mountains in the background, you can use that line that goes across the screen to make sure your image is balanced. Tip number two is shooting at the right time of day. I feel like most people know that the best time of day to shoot is either in the morning around sunrise or in the evening around sunset. But the reason for that is because during the middle of the day you have really harsh light that creates really high highlights and really dark shadows. Whereas if you shoot in the morning around sunrise or sunset, you have a much more even light across everything. So whether it's landscapes, portraits, products, whatever it is that you're shooting, that light that's coming across and that light that's showing up around sunrise and sunset, is a much softer, better looking light. It's much more flattering, especially with portraits. So shoot at the right time of day. Tip number three is using leading lines. Now this is something that I feel like I should have picked up forever ago, but for whatever reason, it took me maybe six months into photography to realize that I should be using leading lines. And a lot of times, just naturally, we kind of find leading lines as we're taking pictures, but it's something that a lot of times we don't really focus on. So leading lines help guide a viewer's eye through your photo and they help direct their eye to the subject of your photo. Leading lines can be created out of almost anything. If you're taking a landscape picture, you can use the shoreline on a beach to, to help guide the eye down the beach towards a sunset or down towards someone that's walking on the beach. If you're up in the mountains, you can use the tree lines that come down from two different ridges to help frame up a big mountain peak. Or if you're down in the city taking portraits, you can use the side of a building that has lines coming through the concrete to help guide the eye towards the person you're taking a picture of. Like, you can create lines out of almost anything and they can come in from the bottom, from the sides, from the top. Just find ways to get creative and, and fine lines. Tip number four is use the exposure slider. Now a lot of times you can just tap on whatever you want to be in focus and a phone will automatically expose for whatever you're taking a picture of. But sometimes if you're taking a picture of like something that has a really bright highlight like a blue sky and you're trying to take a picture of someone in the foreground that's kind of shadowed, there's a really stark contrast between the highlights of the sky and the shadow of the person. And so you can select either the sky or the person you're taking a picture of, it'll expose for that and then you can just touch on the screen and you can drag that exposure slider to try and find a happy median between the sky and the person you're taking a picture of. Then if you're gonna edit it afterwards, you can get a lot more detail out of both the sky and the person you're taking a picture of and you're not gonna lose as much detail. All right, and tip number five is gonna be just chill. A lot of times when I get to a place that I'm really excited to get to, we, we show up and we get to the viewpoint and all you wanna do is start taking pictures of everything around you. Just take a second, chill, find what you like about the area, find what's gonna be in frame, frame it up, and then just get creative. A lot of times it can be as simple as like bringing the phone up a little bit higher, crouching down, getting a lower angle, but think about what you like in that frame and then use things around you to get creative with the shot. A lot of times if I get to a place that's really heavily photographed, I'll take that one shot that I really like that I see everywhere on Instagram, but then after that, I'll look around and I'll see what trees I can use to shoot through or like what angles I can get that are, that'll get a little bit more creative than the shots that I always see. And by doing that, sometimes you get a shot that you like more than the picture that you saw on Instagram or wherever else you saw it, and you end up using that. 
sometimes it doesn't pan out and you end up throwing all those other shots out and you use the one that you've seen because that's the one you like the best. But the important thing is, is just take a second, look around you, see what you can use to make the shot a little bit more interesting, play around with different angles, things like that, that could give you a shot that's more unique than the stuff that you've seen. Okay, so we've gone through tips one through five and the last thing that I would say is be willing to take all of these rules and just throw them out the window. Be willing to break any given one of them, or all of them. Because a lot of times I'll get to a location that I'm gonna take a picture at and I can't find the right leading lines or, uh, or the light's not right or something like that. Whatever it is, just take the picture and you can always go back to it later. But sometimes a picture is just epic because of what it is. So if things don't match up 100% the way you want them to or they don't match up with any of those five tips that I just gave, don't worry about it. Still take the picture, still create the memory because you can always go back at another time when the light's better or when you have a little bit more time to be there and you can get it the next time. But with that being said, you're now way more prepared than I was when I first started taking pictures and you should be able to go out and take much better pictures with your phone or DSLR if you already have one. Thanks a ton for watching guys. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.